here in the Gemälde Gallery, we're surrounded by so much visual splendor. And it seems a good place to think about epiphanies, which is to say moments of showing or, or revealing, and particularly in relation to Christ's life and story. And what we're looking at here is a moment in his story which is often called the Epiphany and celebrated in the church's year on the Feast of the Epiphany. Yes, in this round work, it's known as a tondo in Italian by Domenico Veneziano, we have a scene that's described as the adoration of the Magi. The Magi are wise men, they're sometimes described as kings, and you can see this artist has represented the three figures here with their crowns, and they have learned of the Christ child's birth. They have found their way to him by way of a bright star in the night sky, which isn't represented here, but often is in these subjects. And you can see they've made their way to the Christ child who, even though he's a newborn child, he's somehow sitting up and blessing them and they're offering gold, frankincense and myrrh. These are symbolic gifts, which all say something about who Christ is and what's going to happen to him. So the gold is associated with kingship and that upright posture you described almost looks a bit regal, doesn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. He's enthroned on his mother's lap. Frankincense is associated with the incense burnt in the temple. It's got uh, some su suggestion of sacrifice mm -hmm. uh, and Christ's life will be a sacrifice and end in a sacrifice. And myrrh is an oil used for anointing dead bodies. So there's already an anticipation here of the end of Christ's life and his entombment as well. The three wise men themselves are shown with crowns, I think because there's a, a tradition that all of the nations of the world will be gathered one day to Jerusalem. There are passages in the Bible, including in the Psalms, that speak of all the kings of the earth being gathered together in Jerusalem. And in a sense, what we're seeing here is the fulfillment of, of what was seen as a prophecy, that Christ had come not only for the Jewish people, but for all the peoples beyond them. And the sheer diversity of this entourage captures, I think, some of that sense that all the world is here, isn't it? Yes, we have different kinds of clothes that seem to be from different parts of the world, different physiognomies. What's fascinating is, although we're looking at an adoration of the Magi, this might also reflect a contemporary event in Florence, where there was a gathering of people from all over the world at an ecumenical council, so a council, a meeting of church representatives. And so this was the first time that many Florentines and especially Italian artists had seen people from all different parts of the world in their exotic dress, which we can see reflected in this composition, these amazing hats and elaborate coats, which you also see is probably the first example of camels being painted in Italian Renaissance art. So there really is a sense here that all the world has come to meet the Christ child. And there it is all focused in this king who's almost prostrated himself, kneeling very low to kiss um, Jesus' little foot. And Mary presents the Christ child to him, almost assisting the epiphany. And I sometimes think she looks a bit like a priest who at the altar offers the consecrated bread, which communicates the presence of Christ to the congregation, um, to those who come and kneel, just as this king is doing, kneel down to receive it. So uh, in a sense, this is recalling what regular churchgoers do when they approach the altar. They too have a kind of epiphany. And it's that sense of our being involved in what's happening for the Magi here. As viewers of this painting, we too are becoming part of this epiphany. And epiphany is something we're going to be seeing in our next uh, film as well, an epiphany of a very different sort at a very different time of Jesus's life. <laughs> 